Welcome and thank you for joining us. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm Daniel Davis. As many of us are approaching our midlife, we start getting concerned about our retirement, wondering whether or not we're going to be able to enjoy the golden years with enough money to be able to do the things that we want to do and to have the freedom that we want to enjoy. So many of us really try to take a shortcut from time to time, especially when the numbers get real big, by simply playing the lottery and hoping that Lady Luck favors us. Joining you here on the Beyond 50 radio program today is someone who has done just that and has actually had Lady Luck smile on him more than once, actually seven times. He's a lottery game grand prize winner, and he's also going to be talking with us today about how we can increase our chances of winning a lottery, probably in various types as well. We're going to learn the ins and outs, the do's and don'ts of what we can do when we buy a lottery ticket And perhaps one of those certainly isn't looking at numbers on the back of a fortune cookie slide that tells us what our fortune is. I'd like to welcome to the Beyond 50 radio program today, special guest Richard Lustig. Richard, thank you for joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program. You're absolutely welcome. Now, one thing about your book that I can certainly tell the listeners is it's not a two- or three-hundred-page book full of philosophy and nonsense. It certainly is shortened to the point. What made you decide to do that in a book because it's so unusual? Because that's exactly one of the things is I'm trying to draw attention to this, that this is completely different from anything anybody's thought. People are brainwashed. Uh, size of book, how many, I mean, this is a how-to book. How do you learn how to increase your chances of winning? I don't care if it's a how-to book about building uh, dollhouses. What do they do? They sell you a two to three hundred page book and the first Two, three, four chapters are talking about the history of dollhouses, where they originated from, what kind of materials did they used to use years ago until they discovered this, discovered that. And people, by the time they've gotten through all that, they're saying, enough's already already. I just need to know, does the red dot go on the green hole or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what I've done. I've made my book very short. It's a little bit different size than most books because I want it to be short, sweet, and to the point and easy for people to understand. And that was another important part of it. I, you don't have to be a mathematical genius. You don't have to have a calculator. I made this very simple to understand so that you can pick it up, you can read it, and you can apply what you learn. Okay. Now, Richard, you know, people would take a look at this, of course, and obviously, you know, different lotteries have different winning um, odds you know for instance you have scratch tickets they have certain odds and then of course playing things like the powerball or the state lotteries have different odds as well what was it that you i guess kind of uncovered if you will was it the odds themselves that you started taking a look at or what was it exactly that you started doing that started really increasing your luck to the point where you've won seven times There's no one particular item that I can point to and say that was the one important item that enabled me to win seven lottery game grand prizes. It's a it's a multitude of things that I have put together. The 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 thing one of the big things here is I want people to understand is I'm my wife and I are very honest people. We're not and we're not like again, we're not mathematical geniuses or nothing. This isn't some third world corporation or or whatever that's done this. We're just normal people like you guys. And I went out when the lottery came to Florida 25 years ago and bought lottery tickets, just like everybody else, just hoping to win enough money to to retire or whatever. And I had no plan. I had no method or whatever. And unfortunately, like everybody else, I was losing 99% of the time. So I just sat down and said, well, you know, there's got to be something you can do to give yourself a better chance. So I wrote down some ideas. What if I did this? What if I did that? And of course, some of my things that I came up with did not work. I threw those out the window. But some of the things I came up with did work. I said, okay, let me see if I can come up with some more winning ideas. And as I kept adding to this list of things that were enabling me to win more often and larger amounts of money, eventually I won my first grand prize. Mm-hmm. Now, to be honest with you, you know, Daniel, when I won my first grand prize, uh, and you, you used a word that I hate, uh, luck, but uh, that's what everybody, you know, the world seems to be stuck on that word, and I, at that time, was like everybody else, else still, 
I just thought, wow, I won a grand prize. I'm a lucky guy. But then I won my second one, and then my third one. And then when I won my fourth grand prize, that's when I said to myself, wait a minute. You know, luck has nothing to do with this. Okay? You can't, I mean, most people have never won a, a lottery grand prize. In fact, most people don't even know someone that's won one. So how can you say that someone who has won four lottery game grand prizes at that point is just a lucky person? So I continued to work on my method and adding to it, and eventually I won my fifth, my sixth, and here we are now with seven. So luck, people who rely on luck are fooling themselves. Ah, okay. Well, it certainly makes sense if you won more than one time, then, well, there's a little more than luck going on there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go ahead and break it down to uh, a couple of things that you share in your book that people should consider doing when it comes to standing in line and getting ready to buy the ticket, because I know there are some, I guess you could call them myths that circulate out there, and one of them certainly is this. When it comes to going and buying, let's say, the Powerball ticket, that you go in there and you buy it just before the drawing. Talk about some of these things. Absolute foolishness. There is absolute no rhyme or reason why people think that if they wait till the last minute to buy their tickets, it gives them any kind of a of a edge. It doesn't matter if you buy your tickets the moment they go on sale, the next day after the last night's drawing, or you wait till the last, you know, like the eleventh hour they say, just and they're getting ready to close down and you won't be able to buy any more tickets after another ten minutes and buy your tickets. There's no, there is nothing that gives you an edge. I recommend. That, like, for instance, most state lotteries and, and like, Powerball, which is a multi-state lottery, whatever, most of them are, like, on Wednesdays and Saturdays, okay? Mm -hmm. You know after Wednesday night's loss for yourself, you didn't win, whether or not you're going to buy tickets for Saturday night's drawing. You're going to know it the next day. So if you are going to buy tickets, why wait till Saturday, like most people do, and then stand in this long line, sometimes for an hour or two hours to get your <laughs> tickets, you know, shifting from one foot to the other and cursing under your breath and blah, blah, blah. Just, just go the next day on Thursday, the, the, the day after the drawing, the night before, and buy your tickets for the upcoming Saturday night drawing and right. get it over with. You, mm -hmm. There'll be nobody in the store in line waiting to get their tickets. You get in, you get your tickets, you get out. So the only... The only, the only I just I, I correct myself. There is an advantage to when you buy, but it has nothing to do with winning. It's just personal comfort. Gotcha. Now, what about uh, how you go about buying the tickets? There's one uh, piece of advice you give in the book that I've actually seen work. And uh, in fact, it was back in the 1980s when I was working uh, part time at a local grocery. The owner and this uh, other lady they used to like to play what was called the Daily Four. Mm -hmm. You know. And But what they did is they played the same numbers over and over and over again. And I can tell the folks out there that this is something you talk about, and it does work. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Here, here's the thing. There are some basic tips that I try to, to stress when I am doing these interviews, okay? Because there's no way you can go through all the tips in the book, okay? No. So there's, 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 just by people listening to my interviews, it, I've had this happen over and over and over again. People have contacted me. You know, I didn't buy your book yet, but I, I heard you on the radio the other day, blah, 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 and I followed your, the tip that you gave them, and, and I can't believe it. It actually worked or whatever. So let's, let's cover a couple of these things that are, these are important tips that I give away. They are in my book as well as all of the other stuff, but let's start out with number one. Here's the most important tip that I give away. And this has nothing to do with giving you, giving you a better chance of winning the lottery. What it has something to do with is controlling your finances and not getting yourself in trouble. Set a budget. This mm -hmm. is very important. Set a budget. Don't get what's called lottery fever. Don't spend grocery money. Don't spend rent money. You know, people get crazy with this, especially when those jackpots get up really high and and that's another thing that always kills me. People say, well, you know, I don't really buy lottery tickets unless it gets up to like two or three hundred million. 
what, excuse me, 40 million isn't enough for you? Right. <laughs> I'll take 40, I'll take 1 million every day. <laughs> you know, I'm not greedy. So um, set a budget and stick with that budget. And as you follow my method and you start to win, your winnings will actually increase your budget for you. And eventually you'll get to a point where you won't be spending any of your money out of your pocket. You'll be playing with all lottery winnings. This is what I do. I mean, I don't. I, I, every, I buy tickets every day, but I never spend a penny of money of my money. I'm I'm buying now strictly with lottery winnings. So set a budget. So now let's go to tip number two, and that's where I'm going to partially now answer the quench, the question that you asked about people who are playing the same numbers and so forth. People are lazy. You're lazy. I'm lazy. Everybody's lazy. Some people are more than others. And one of the things that people have a tendency to do is take the lazy, the easy, quick way out, and they'll go to the store and buy quick picks. Now, for those people out there listening that don't know what a quick pick is, that's when you go up to the counter, you hand the clerk a couple of dollars, and you say, hey, give me a couple of tickets for tonight's big jackpot drawing. And he punches the keyboard, and the computer spits out a couple of ticks for you. And these are computer-generated sets of numbers, mm -hmm. and they're called quick picks. People do not play quick picks. And I, let me repeat that one more time. Do not play quick picks. And I know there are people out there sitting and listening to the show right now that are falling off their chairs saying, what do you mean don't play quick picks? I always play quick picks. Have you won yet? Right, right, right. The reason why, you know, it's easy to give advice, but, but you've got to be able to back up that advice with intelligent explanations. The reason why you don't play quick picks, people, is because when you buy a quick pick, it is a computer-generated set of numbers. And every time you buy a quick pick, you are getting a different set of numbers. So... The odds of playing, let's take Powerball, for instance, the odds of winning Powerball are 1 in 175 million. Do you realize how crazy those odds are of mm -hmm. trying to win? So every time you buy a quick pick, your odds are always going to be 1 in 175 million. But if you pick your own numbers and you play your own numbers, the same sets of numbers for every draw, this is going to sound strange, but it's actually true, every time you lose, your odds get just a little bit better, not much at all, trust me, but every little bit helps. Get a, they get a little bit better in your favor of possibly winning the next drawing. So pick your own numbers, never ever change them, and never miss a draw. Mm -hmm. Now, when you were talking about using uh, your winning money, for instance, to play more, I know that my brother, he uh, likes to play video poker from time to time, and I've rarely seen anybody who wins as often as he does when he plays. And so I asked him one time, I said, so what do you do about you know going about playing this? I mean, this, this was something he'd win an extra couple of hundred bucks a week. And uh, he says, well, what I simply do is I'll throw 20 bucks in. And he says, that's my limit. And I'll go ahead and I'll play that out. And then when I win, and if I exceed the $20, and I go ahead and I cash the ticket out, I keep the difference between what I won and what I put in, then I go ahead and I put that $20 back in again. And then he keeps playing it until he either wins more money or eventually he plays it out, you know. And 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 you know, like I said, uh, there were times that as he was, uh, you know, working the job where those machines were around, that was an extra couple of hundred bucks a week that he had an in income, you know, that he didn't have, of course, have to uh, claim in taxes. But the philosophy was pretty easy. But you talk about the very same thing, pretty much. Yeah, if you are smart, and it's, and. It's Boy, it's it, it's not that people are stupid. Don't, it, it's just that they 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 need to be taught how to play the game correctly. You know, that's that's just the biggest thing. They're brainwashed into believing certain things, and certain things that they're brainwashed into believing aren't 
really true. So if you if you win, when we're talking about the reinvesting of your winnings, yeah, that that will you don't know, reinvest it all, and then there's a scale as far as how much you win versus how much you put in and whatever. But you 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 can you can reach a point very easily where you are not playing any of your own money anymore. That mm-hmm. you've got your lottery winnings in this envelope or this box or whatever it is, and when you play, you use that money, and and you don't have to touch your other money. Mm-hmm. Now, what about scratch tickets? I know you got an interesting uh, way that you should go about that. Now, those odds are a lot different because you can literally win like one out of every three or four tickets, I think it is. Yeah, it depends on which games you're playing and whatever. Right. Um, yeah, the, first of all, let's go back to tip number one that I gave a little bit ago about the uh, setting a budget. Times are tough. The economy is in the toilet. We all know it. It's been that way for quite some time now. I don't see it coming around for quite some time. So if you set a budget and your budget's kind of low, don't be ashamed. You know, you're not in the boat alone. A lot of people are that way. So you start out small. And if you are on a small budget, I suggest you don't even play scratch tickets that you stick just with ball games and then only play certain kinds of ball games. Mm -hmm. Now, here's why. A lot of people seem to think that you have a better chance of winning with with the scratch ticket games. And if you look only at the odds, it very much appears that way, that you're going to have a much better chance of finding and winning big jackpots with scratch tickets than you are with ball games. But it's, but actually it is exactly the opposite. If in ball games, it's a statewide game or this like Powerball and Mega Millions are, are multi-state games. It doesn't matter where you buy your tickets, what day of the week you buy your tickets. It's all the drawing. The whole drawing is done at one time on Wednesday night at 10.59 or whatever it is, you know. And, and everybody has an equal chance of winning based on the tickets they bought, okay? Mm-hmm. But here's the difference with scratch tickets. Even though, again, when you read the odds, it appears the odds are better with scratch ticks. But here's what people don't think. Um, let's see, your area code 503, that's out west. Isn't that Oregon or something? Yes, it is, Portland, Oregon. All right. So now, Oregon comes out with a new scratch ticket game. All right? And let's say that scratch ticket game is going to have 10... $100,000 grand prize tickets that will be available when the game starts. Okay? So they're going to pretend $100,000 grand prize tickets. Now, these tickets are prepackaged up. Even the lottery people themselves have no idea where the grand prize tickets are in that huge big of st- stacks of that just came in by the truck and are all stacked up there and they're near the door, they have no idea where those 10 tickets are in those, that huge, huge stack of tickets. Mm-hmm. And they'll take the individual packages and throw them on a truck and ship them out there around the state. So one of those 10, uh, ten hundred thousand dollar grand prize tickets can end up in Baker City. Another mm-hmm. one can end up in Medford. Another one can end up in Coos Bay. One of them can end up in Salem. You see what I'm getting at? I do. They end up all over the state. You're in Portland. So first of all, what are the odds of one of the, just one of those ten dollar or one of those uh, hundred thousand dollar grand prize tickets even ending up in the city that you live in? Mm-hmm. And then, what's the odds of if one of those tickets makes it to Portland? What's the odds of that ticket end up being in a stack that is sent to the store that you buy your tickets at? Right. Now, when you look at it that way, you say, well, that's crazy. You can't ever win. Because there's no way to know where the tickets are. Mm -hmm. And basically, that's almost real, except you can win. You know, uh, one of my seven lottery game grand prizes was on a scratch ticket. Two of my seven game 
uh, grand prize winnings were off of second chance drawings, which were off of scratch tickets. So you can win on scratch tickets. But if you're on a limited budget, I suggest you only play the ball games. If you're, if you're one of the fortunate people that the economy has not made it very tough for you to survive and you're financially doing okay and whatever, and you can afford to spend maybe more than the average guy out there, then yeah, play scratch tickets because it's, it's, it's fun playing scratch tickets uh, rather than just buying a ticket and waiting for Wednesday night's drawing you know, on the TV. You know, you get to scratch it, try to match up numbers or symbols or whatever. So it's a little more fun to play the scratch tickets, and you can win at it. I'm just making people aware of that it's a little more difficult than most people think it is. Okay, now when it comes to playing the ball, uh, the Powerball, Megabucks, whatever it is called in the individual states, so how much do you usually suggest people buy? Is it just as much as they can afford? Well, can I, can I just finish one more thing about the scratch tickets sure. and then I'll go to that? Okay. Absolutely. So here's, what it, here's one of the best ways to increase your chances of winning with the scratch tickets. We're going to refer back to number one again, the budget. So let's just use for this example, your budget is $100. My method will work whether your budget is $10, $100, or $1,000. It doesn't matter. But we're going to use $100 as an example for, just for, for right now. Now, to scratch tickets come in all denominations. There's $1 tickets, $5 tickets, $10, $20, and so forth. So take your budget, so let's, again, let's say it's $100, and divide it by 10. So what this means is you're going to go in and you're going to buy 10 $10 scratch tickets. Now, you can go in there and buy, if you can afford it, and your budget allows you, you can buy 15, 20, 30. Just don't go in there and buy three or eight or six or nine. You've got to buy at least 10. All right? But if you go in, and, and here's the big difference. People go up to the counter. I see this every day, Daniel. They look at the choices of tickets because there may be a different amounts of games for each dollar amount, okay? Right. They, they go up to the counter and they say, hmm, let's see here. Well, let me take two of those, and oh, you got bingo. I like bingo. Let me have three of those, and hey, I like the colors on that ticket right there. Let me have another couple of those. Mm -hmm. Oh, folks, that's the worst thing in the world you can do. You might as well put on a blindfold, take a loaded gun, and try to hit the target. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen. So here's what you do. You go in there. You look at the display. You've got $100. You're going to buy 10 $10 tickets, and they have four different $10 games. Okay? You buy 10 tickets in a row of the same game. Okay. Ten tickets in a row of the same game. If you do that, almost every <laughs> single time you do that, there's going to be at least one winning ticket in there. Most of the times, two, and sometimes even three or four winning tickets in that stretch of ten tickets in a row. Now, the next question people say to me, well, Richard, you just said there's four different $10 games, so how do I know which one to play? Well, that's in my book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's about as far as we're going to go with that, folks. <laughs> we can't give away all the secrets of the wizard. You've got to go out there and do your due diligence as well, I think. A lot of times, and by stating that simply, Richard, is that people always want to find the easy way to do things. And sure. Yeah, well, the easy way is you get out there and you go and you do it. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's the right. easy way. Now, now, what was your question that I, that I... Well, it was back to the Powerball or, you know, the Mega Bucks or whatever the drawing is, the ball games as you call them. And, uh, you know, how about that? Because it really takes just a dollar to win. I don't wouldn't see the necessity of spending... A hundred dollars if you're going to play one set of numbers, unless you're going to play several set of numbers. Is that true? Well, Daniel, <clears throat> I mean it's pretty it's pretty uh, common sense that it, that a guy who goes in and buys ten tickets is going to have a better chance of winning than the guy that only buys one ticket. Right. Okay. And the guy who goes in there and buys a hundred tickets is going to have a much better chance than the guy that goes in there and only buys ten tickets. So that is an important thing. 
but again, that's based on your budget. Like, we're back to that budget thing. Everything revolves around the budget, okay? So we're back to the budget. If you can afford it and you can spend $100 every, every day for a lottery, then why not? But if you can't and you can only afford $100 a week or you can only afford $10 a week, don't be ashamed. You're not in the boat alone. Right. But play what you can afford. So the reason why it's so important to pick your own numbers is because, again, the, the quick picks, you're getting a different set of numbers every time. Your odds are always one in, in 175 million if you're playing Powerball. And like I said, when you, buy, when you pick your own numbers, and this is where people get, here's where people get confused. Because they're saying, well, you know, I, I, I bought this, this uh, CD from a guy and charged me uh, $150, for, and, it's a, and it's a computer algorithm program that he ran and developed, and it, and it tells you what numbers come up the most, and what numbers come up the least, and blah, blah, blah. Oh, my gosh, that is such a bunch of hogwash. Mm -hmm. There is, folks, listen to me. There is no right or wrong or magical way to pick your numbers, okay? Right or wrong, there is none. It doesn't matter how you pick your numbers. You can, most people use birthdays and anniversaries. There's nothing right about that, but there's nothing wrong about it. The only thing I will suggest to you is if you're going to use birthdays and anniversaries to pick your numbers, remember that. They're based on days of a month. So there's 31 days in a month. So all your numbers are going to be between 1 and 31. And if the game you're playing has, you have to pick numbers between 1 and 50, then make sure you throw in some higher numbers too. Otherwise, if you, all your numbers are lower, which is what most people do, and now one night your set of numbers comes up, you're going to probably be ending up splitting it with a lot more people than you wish you'd had to and end up with a lot smaller amount than you were hoping for. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? So uh, uh, whether you pick birthdays or anniversaries, you, I mean, you could write the numbers on the wall and throw darts at them, and the first six numbers that come up are the numbers you're going to play. Here's what's important about picking your own numbers. It's not how you pick your numbers. It's what you do with the set of numbers after you've picked it. And that's where, again, in my book, I teach you how to do the survey. How to, uh, I mean, uh, the research, I'm sorry. There is a way to do research to determine if the set of numbers you've now chosen is a good set of numbers or not. And if they're not a good set of numbers, you throw them away and start over again. If they are a good set of numbers, now you hang on to those numbers, you you buy them every single draw, if it's twice a week, or if it's seven days a week. You play them every single time there's a draw, and you never, never, never change any of those numbers in that set. Hmm. And by doing that, you will increase your chances of winning. Okay. That sounds reasonable enough. Now, again, what was it? How do you measure whether or not they're a good set of numbers or not? It doesn't matter according to what you were saying earlier. No. that It doesn't matter what numbers you choose because, again, here, remember one thing. It's, do, does a number win the jackpot, or does a set of numbers win the jackpot? Right, okay. Okay, it's a set of numbers. So once you have, picking, have picked your set of numbers, now you do the research that, that I teach you in the book, and it's, it's very easy, very simple to do, but it's too long to explain in an interview, okay? okay. But if, once you do that research, and you determine now, okay, this is a good set of numbers, then you go forward to the next step, which is playing them every week and never changing them. Okay, great. For those just tuning in, we're talking with Richard Lustig, and his book is Winning Lottery Method. This has been seen on television. For those who need the validation that television will help you make those kind of decisions because it has so much integrity. The Beyond 50 Radio Show, though, does tell you that a lot of his methods that he's talking about here do actually win. I've actually seen it in action before I even seen this book, believe it or not. And so and and obviously you have a lot of testimonials on your website. If you can give our listeners your website out, that would be great. Absolutely. It's winning lottery method dot com. And and like you said, Daniel, if they go to my website, I have a whole page dedicated just to testimonials. And these are real testimonials from real people. This isn't just a bunch of stuff we made up to sell my book. And by the way, the title of the book is Learn 
how to increase your chances of winning the lottery. Ah, but, gotcha. But, but uh, I have people who have bought my book and are winning more money now than they've ever won before, not just hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars, but even hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars. I've, I have some people who have bought my book, followed my method, and have won millions of dollars already. And then they can also, there's another page on my website where they can look at video clips of TV shows that I've been on. I've been on, oh gosh, so many times I can't even remember. I've been on uh, Good Morning America, the Today Show, Rachel and uh, uh, Rachel Ray, uh, um, MSNBC, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So they can check this out. And in fact, I want people to check me out. I want people to know that this is real. This is not a joke. This is not a ripoff because we all know there's so much scamming going on in the world nowadays and people cheating people. I mean, gosh, it's, 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 it's so disheartening what, what, some, what people will do to other people. But this is real. It works. And we prove it and over and over again. WinningLotteryMethod.com is the place that you can go to find out how you can get a copy of this book. Our guest today, Richard Lustig. Richard, thank you so much for joining us here on the Beyond 50 Radio program. Do we have time for me to give your listeners a special offer? We'll let you take another 30 seconds for another special offer, of course. All right, real quick. Go to my website and and, uh, buy my method and sign my guest book and tell us that you heard about my method on... uh, on Daniel Davis' show. Beyond on, uh, 50 Radio, that is. Right, Beyond 50 Radio. The yeah. first 10 people that do that, I'll also include with their purchase a Florida Lottery scratch ticket where they'll have a chance to win at least $5,000. How about that? Sounds good, and we do have quite a huge listener base, so I expect a lot of response from that. There we go. Thank you again, Richard, for joining us here on the program. Daniel, thank you for having me on, and let's do it again when I win number eight. You got it. (laughs) We want to thank you, the listeners out there, for tuning in. You just learned how to increase your odds of winning a jackpot, and you can certainly do that. Go to winninglotterymethod.com, as Richard suggested, to find out more. Also find out more by visiting our website at beyond50radio.blogspot.com. We do have a free weekly e-news update for you to be able to sign up as well. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you again for tuning in. This is the Beyond 50 Radio program. And remember, live your day past halfway.